Thank you, Jen, for that very warm. <laughs> thank you, Jen, for that very warm introduction, and thank you to Sweat for having me here today. Congratulations to Kathy and all the grant and scholarship winners this evening. You all deserve recognition. Let's all give them another round of applause. And sustainability is 
isn't a French movement or for a certain type of person. The idea for Great Philly was born. Over the past 11 years, we've communicated ways to live sustainably and make Philadelphia better for ourselves and future generations across individuals, for profits, nonprofits, and civic and government organizations. And although we continue to work on a sustainable city, we have an urgent climate crisis. The past five years on record were, or sorry, the past five years are the hottest five on record globally, but there's more. October 2019 was the warmest October yet, just last month. 2019 is on track to be the warmest year to in record. And there's a huge cost to this. Over the past five years, there have been 10 or more billion dollar weather and climate events, disaster events, according to NOAA. We know that climate change will make Philadelphia hotter and wetter, but by 2100, our summer temperatures may look like those currently of Juarez, Mexico. It's a little bit different climate than what we're experiencing now. Children. In September, I attended the UN Climate Summit in New York. People from around the globe gathered, and climate solutions were shared in a variety of ways, from social media to virtual reality. Later that evening, I attended a Climate Week event with a former Vice President, Al Gore. That same Al Gore who was behind an inconvenient truth. The, the theater on the Upper West Side was packed. But Al Gore wasn't even the star of the show. The panel revolved around five young climate activists, as young as 14 years old. They were founders and leaders of the climate movement. They spoke clearly and urgently about the climate crisis. And their movement is only growing. Four million people from across the globe, mostly children, marched in the global climate strike in September. It was the largest climate protest in history. When we look at this young generation, we see that no one and no action is too small, too young, or too powerless to make a difference. We'll hopefully look back on this dying one time one day and realize that we're living in a time where some old men were trying to destroy the planet, but it took children to save it. But who's going to start? Should companies? After all, there are 100 fossil fuel companies who have been responsible for over 71% of global greenhouse gas emissions since 1988. We can switch to solar panels or elect to receive renewable energy in our home through PA power switch. But we can't bring up switching to renewables as the only solution. Fossil fuel companies see the writing on the wall and are investing in another industry to create single-use plastics. We can say no to single-use. After all, it's from crude oil. But what about the regulators? Is it the government's job to solve climate change? Despite federal rollbacks, like the one we just talked about with the Paris Climate Accords, uh, we can't give up on government action. Governors from 25 states, including Pennsylvania, have agreed to uphold the Paris Climate Agreement. But we have to pay attention to what our local government is doing and participate in the process. We can vote. Hopefully you all did two days ago. People often wonder if bringing their water bottles, their unreasonable water bottles, or saying no to a straw will make a difference. Can an, can an individual really help, especially in a gloomy crisis like the climate? There are 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth that make decisions every day. What we eat, what we wear, how we get from point A to point B. And our choices, whether we shop online, or visit a local business down the street, send messages with where we spend every dollar. It says whether we, whether we value our local economy or support a large company in the world that maybe has a huge one day shipping carbon footprint. If companies didn't care about our choices, we wouldn't see Starbucks getting rid of straws or Trader Joe's announcing that it's reducing its plastic packaging. We can shift overall trends based on our individual choices. So yes, it will take all of us, the best in this room, your friends, your family, to continue on this time of fight. But what can you all do in this room starting today to make a difference? Start with where you are. Make better choices for the planet. And share why you're doing it.
For example, are you inspired to reduce your meat intake? Ask a friend to join in for one day a week. Maybe that will turn to two days or five. You can continue to learn. We're in a room filled with inspiring experts. We just heard from amazing, you know, grant recipients and people who are making a difference. But even as experts, we have room to grow. So you can listen to podcasts, you can read, you can watch documentaries or find information wherever it's available. If you're interested in joining, I'm currently in a climate crisis book vendor, so you can read these and you have a book club soon. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Or you can always check your affiliate. But one, what's one other last thing you can do? Connect. We're stronger together in this fight. This room here at SWEP is one excellent opportunity to find community and to connect with others. The climate crisis is the most important challenge of our lifetime, and we have to do it together. As my favorite program says best, if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. <laughs>